What's the biggest thing you've built in Minecraft? A small house? A medium house? What about an absolutely gargantuan mega structure consisting of over 580,000 blocks? No one? Really? Well, I have a plan to build that in my hardcore world. But first, it requires me collecting all the items for it. These ones are easy and done, while these ones are not. So today, I'm going to actually get those items by building three of the fastest possible farms. Holy cow. So the first item I want to farm is 32,314 frog lights. Essentially, to get the frog lights, we're going to need a bunch of magma cubes to spawn and then go through portals where we'll have the frogs eat them and then turn them into frog lights. Which is why we need a basalt deltas biome, because it's the only place magma cubes can spawn. Let's go through this portal. Okay, sweet, an ocean. Yeah, this will be perfect. So not only did we need a basalt deltas for the magma cubes, but we're also making a guardian farm, which means I need an ocean monument. Not even 50 blocks from the portal, I coincidentally found one. So because these farms will be over the ocean, I think it'd be cool to decorate them by building an oil rig on top. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's come up with a game plan. First, I want to build the farms, then we'll move on to a creative world where we can design the oil rig, and finally we'll follow a blueprint and build it on the hardcore world. Okay, we should probably clear this monument so we don't get mining fatigue while building. Break that, that, and that. While I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you about today's sponsor, Opera GX. So if you're anything like me, you probably use Chrome, Firefox, oh god, maybe even Internet Explorer, and you've never had the time to try Opera GX. Today I finally gave it a shot and was pleasantly surprised. When it comes to switching to Opera GX, you're presented with this single button that imports all your tabs and settings from your old browser. By clicking over here and entering the store, you can download hundreds of free mods which change the browser to have custom looks, sounds, wallpapers, and even Discord backgrounds. I actually chose this darker Minecraft mod and turned on the forced dark pages as it puts less strain on my eyes at night. This is a lot better than this. Now this is my personal favorite feature. By using the link in the description, you can see the 12 latest videos I've uploaded right here. And if you're worried that this might cause lag, have no fear because in the settings you can limit the amount of RAM Opera GX is allowed to use. All these features make it an awesome browser to use. Thanks again to Opera GX for sponsoring today's video. Now that the monument's cleared, we have to plan out the locations for the three farms. These two have to be pretty far apart because otherwise the portals will link together and everything will break. All right, so first up, we have the frog light farm and it's gonna go right here. According to the block list, we're gonna have to collect over 10,000 blocks. So I better get started. Now the design I went for is by Strom and supposedly it's gonna make about 40,000 frog lights an hour. If you're curious to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. First of all, we need 4,400 black stained glass. We do have the glass, but not the dye. So I quickly traversed to the Wither Rose farm in the end. I AFK'd there for a few minutes and in no time had enough Wither Roses to turn all the glass into black stained glass. Now we need some black concrete, which I do seem to have, and then some mud, which I don't. So looks like we need to head over to the mangrove swamp. Next, some rails, and let's go ahead and just power those. Then a few redstone materials. And the last thing we need are 17 amethyst clusters, which I believe we can find in geodes. Is this just it? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so 16 more of these. There we go, that is everything we need for the frog light farm. So that block list was actually pretty easy. The later shroom light and guardian farms are gonna be much, much harder. So I feel like we should actually warm up by building the frog light farm first and then get the materials for the other two afterwards. So to actually start building this, it should be relatively simple. I just need to follow the blueprint tutorial. What in the what now? So see how this says that these are incorrect? I think that's because I actually need to put lava buckets into each of them. Yeah. 
And so I spent the next couple of hours building up the farms, struggling with rails, freaking dingleberry. This isn't working. Placing glass and making water streams. So it's been a little bit and I think we're almost done, but now I need to like flood these entire cubes with water. I think we can do that by just putting water on top and then like coming down here below and sort of filling these parts in. Cool. That was awkward. Anyways, those item filters should now mean the frog light sorter is working. So lastly, we just got to add some chests and then I'm going to just fill all these up with shulker boxes. All right. So now that we're done with the overworld part, I think we just got to rip the bandaid off and get all the frogs into the farm. By my calculations, we need 140. So we're going to need some shulkers and these. Then interesting trivia fact, you know how you can give frogs slime balls to breed? Not many people know this, but if you give them slime blocks instead, they actually just explode. Oh, how many people do you think just paused the video to go and try that? Anyways, we're gonna set up a frog enclosure here and then start breeding them. We got this little place here and now I'd like to fill all these shulkers up with tadpole buckets. Okay, so it took me a little bit, but I've bred up all the orange frogs and then took the tadpoles over here to the savannah so we could get some of the white ones and then some more over here to the snowy biome so we could get the green ones. Before we move any of these guys, I do want to build the nether side of this farm, which basically just entails placing a couple thousand obsidian. After I had built the nether portals, it was time to move the frogs into the farm. Someone on stream had the smart idea of getting the orange frogs into the farm by just placing the tadpoles in the water. And because it's a plains biome, they'll become the right color. For the green and the white frogs though, I had to use leads to grab the frogs and then pull them through portals. For the most part, it was easy enough, although there was the occasional outlier. If you don't go through the freaking portal now, I'll, uh, I'll dox you. <coughs> Let's not question my tactics. It, it did work and that's what matters. And there we are. Those are all the frogs we need. The final thing we gotta do is light these portals and then the farm is done. All right, we gotta at least test it. I believe I just have to come up here on this platform and then in the overworld, a bunch of magma cubes should be drowning in the water and then turning into mini cubes where they then fall onto the frogs and become their dinner. Nice, that's the first farm working. So in theory, to get all the frog lights I need, I should just have to AFK here overnight and I will have enough. All right then, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, the Shroom Light Farm. And you know, I'm just genuinely so pumped to make this. So let's start with getting all these lower items. Ooh, interesting. It looks like it requires two pieces of one bite ore. Huh? Now it's saying I gotta get six buckets of powdered snow. And you know, I never actually have this stuff here, so we're gonna take all of these buckets and go fill them up. I just realized I have no clue where a snowy peaks biome is. <gasps> that took me like 45 minutes to find. Three hundred and sixty-two buckets of lava. Well, there's only one way to do this. Finally, pistons, glass, stone, and then six thousand seven hundred and twenty-nine polished deep slate. Items have been acquired. What? No, you didn't see though. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, I somehow managed to make a chest monster in my literal storage system. That's like the Oxford Dictionary definition of the meaning of the word oxymoron. As I built the Shroom Light Farm, I realized the task was much larger than I had initially expected. Mostly because the phantoms kept attacking me and knocking me off. All right, we're gonna fill in these. 
no, 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 what, what did I do? No, I was having a ton of fun, as you can clearly tell. So right over here, I want to start the main bone meal towers. Basically, this shroom light farm goes in the middle, and then to get the shroom lights, you need warped fungus trees. But to get those, you need warped fungi, and then bone meal to grow it. So on a creative world, I got this basic design by Dave Rooney, and then put two of these massive bone meal towers on the sides, which should be enough to keep it running forever. Back on the hardcore world, I built the bone meal towers layer by layer. They weren't necessarily the hardest thing to build, but just time consuming because I needed to place lava, fill the dispensers with buckets, and then place water on the ground. By the end of the first tower, I had spent 80 hours on the farm. I, I'm kidding, it, it only took five hours. Okay, before we do the other tower, I need a mental break. So how about we do the middle section and get it out of the way? Thank goodness I have this blueprint because this redstone is beyond my comprehension. And so I built the farm and it was all very routine until, ha, how is it floating? Hold on, wait, wait, can I? Can I still press it? I have literally no clue how I got a floating button. Does redstone? No, I broke it. Well, that was pretty weird. But anyways, we got these TNT blast chambers to build next. Wait, wait, wh why is it starting? Like I said, I was having a ton of fun. And before I knew it, the second bone meal tower was finished. And here we are, the farm is finished. So by flicking this lever, the bone meal towers are gonna turn on and then start producing bone meal. Except for right now, they're gonna be really slow because they're mostly empty. So I'll let them run for maybe like an hour until they're fully filled up. It's been 45 minutes and we're starting to get this extra bone meal just going into the lava. All right, so it's time to run the farm. Three. Two, one. Wait a moment. This isn't how it's a. No! I fixed the farm and verified everything. Then, with the flick of a lever, the farm was running perfectly. So, in just a couple minutes of running the farm, we got over a full shulker of shroom lights. And once I run this overnight, we should be able to get all 30,000 easily. Just like that, I had completed two of the OP farms. But as crazy as these are, they're nothing compared to the final farm. I found a design by Nembon for a guardian farm that produces over 500,000 items every hour. However, to make this farm, we first need to clear all of this water, which is going to require a lot of sand and you know, no, no, actually, I don't want to use this sand because everyone uses normal sand. How about we use this uh, red sand just for the heck of it? And now we need a little platform above the monument for our shulkers and chests and stuff. And then how about a conduit so I can breathe underwater? And a beacon for all the effects. Now that I can breathe, we're going to come in here and just begin marking out an outline. And there we go, the walls are in. Now we're gonna drain this entire place using redstone machines, but first we gotta remove all of the kelp and seagrass so they can run. Then the whole monument actually needs to be cleared, so... And also to answer any questions why there aren't any guardians spawning, it's because I have a mob switch that's preventing them all from spawning. But anyways, now we got this entire region. But it still has water, and for the farm to run, it's all gotta go. So I was thinking the best way to do this would be to use redstone machines that move through the water and drain it as they go. And fortunately, from the research I did, this machine can do that pretty easily, and the block list is even pretty simple. So we'll begin by making some sand and leaf outlines here. Finally, those machines need to go up top. Break these, place those. Nice, the machines should be all ready. Ah, I always hate this. Perfect, they've started up. Are they gonna switch to, yes, awesome, it works. Then we'll just have to sit here for a little while while these flying machines clear away this entire region. I 
It's been a few minutes, the machine did break once, but for the most part I got all the water cleared, and now we just have to come in here with some sponges to drain the rest. Then dry them in the nether, and repeat. You there, humanoids watching this video, I wanted to tell you that I'm training for a marathon and to help motivate myself, I will run 10 feet for every subscriber this video gets. If you want me to go touch grass, then please click that button and help me run a marathon. I spent a few minutes clearing away all the stone, flattening the ground, and filling in the gap so as to make the area perfect. Well, here we are. One massive pit in the ground where our ocean Okay, let's build this thing. The farm does require 36,000 items to build, but I actually don't expect it to be that bad. Cause look at this. The first thing we need are two shulkers of Verdant Frog Lights. Well, isn't that convenient? Cause we got that farm we built. It's almost as if that was intentional. It absolutely was not intentional. Then four shulkers of Obsidian, four shulkers of Smooth Stone, and five shulkers of Soul Sand, which we're gonna have to go out and like collect. Whoa, okay, that could have been a lot worse. Finally, we just need 15,000 glass, which can be easily obtained by taking sand to the super smelter and then cooking it all up. And there we are, once more all the items for the farm have been collected. And yeah, this technically is the last thing I want to build, but I still want to decorate it. Anyways, I quickly made this nether side for the guardian farm. Essentially the guardians are going to fall from up there and then splat onto the ground where their carcasses are going to get pushed by these pistons into the hoppers, and then I'll collect the drops. That was a disgusting way of saying that. So that's one side of the farm done easily, but over here... Okay, how about we start by just cleaning up this area a bit? First things first, I wanted to clean up the floor and make the walls just all red sand so it's neater. And then I also put all the shulkers of items over here. So first, let's get these blocks and just mark out a frame for this thing. As you can see, this farm is pretty huge. I simply followed the tutorial and the hours flew by. Now from building the first few layers, I expected this project to be easy until I got to the water sections. Well, it turns out each of these rectangular prisms needs to be full of water sources so that the bubbles will lift the guardians upwards. So maybe I can just put some grass like right here. And then the water can make a full a, a full... Why isn't this working? Oh, shoot. So, I actually need an extra layer of blocks, too, so that the water can make a full source. I'll quickly do this to the rest of this section. Yeah, okay, so to get the water to flow, let's break these. And perfect. As you can see, though, I'm not floating in here. That's because the water just isn't made of full sources yet. So next thing we'll do is we'll take some kelp and bone meal and then sort of just grow all of these up. Wait, seriously? I have to keep the blocks in before growing the kelp because some smart aleck at Mojang thought it would be nice to make kelp grow past water into air. I'm just kidding. It's all fun and games, Mojang. Minecraft is awesome the way it is. The farm percentage increased. I quickly got the second and the third layers in, then just repeated the same process with the kelp. Finally, some of the kelp hadn't fully grown, so I took some bone meal and went into every one of the containers and grew all of the kelp to ensure that every water source was full. It's been a few hours, everyone, and the last thing we need to do is remove all the kelp, grass, and then light the portals. Now, as we remove this grass, I think I can just come in here and also light the portals. I know the video didn't look like it, but this farm easily took me at least 15 hours to build, so I am so excited to see if it works. So typically you can run this farm on single player, but for the video I created a copy of my world and then spawned a player in the overworld so we can see the nether side of it running. Oh. My. Gosh. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. 
That's actually crazy. And just like that, the third and final farm was created. I had already spent over 40 hours on the project, but this is only the beginning because I still want to add decorations to the farms. All right, so the plan for the decoration is to make a massive oil rig that's going to sit on top of the guardian farm, completely hiding that hideous red sand cube there. Typically, this type of thing isn't the easiest to design on hardcore mode, so we're actually going to hop onto a creative world and get planning. So I want to inspire myself by doing as much research as I can on oil rigs. And also that way, the one that we make is going to be much more realistic and it's just going to look a lot cooler. I found a really cool oil rig called the Brent Delta located in the United Kingdom. I think this would be a cool inspiration to try and replicate. First off, we have the pillars that are holding the entire rig up. Now, an interesting thing I learned about oil rigs is that they actually don't connect to the ocean floor. These are like massive tubes that allow thousands of tons of metal to just float on the water. I know, it's crazy, right? I of course had the next question of, how do the oil rigs balance? Because if there's like one pillar, what's just keeping it from plopping over? over or something. And what I found about these oil rigs is that they sometimes attach massive cables to the ocean floor on all the sides to fix that problem. So for our build, we're going to try to make some of these massive pillars and then just begin with having them float on the water. The other cool fact about oil rigs is that they're usually built on land and then shipped to sea just like we're doing in the creative world and then shipping it to the hardcore world once it's designed. I feel like we now know enough to at least get started. If you remember Shovel from the Avatar Islands video, he's a master builder who's going to offer me some assistance with essentially creating steps for me to work through, because I'm going to be honest, I have no clue where to begin with making this. So this rig is pretty chaotic. There's a bunch of different stuff like crates, scaffolding, platforms, and cranes. So where would you say is like the best place to start? You might want to make all these assets individually first and then paste them together afterwards. Oh yeah, I will, uh, I'll try that. So I first built a few crate designs with different shapes, sizes, and colors. These are gonna make up the main structure of the oil rig. As you can see in the photo, it has a lot of levels to it, so hopefully these can replicate that accurately. Next, I used some commands to build some scaffolding. We have the gray ones and the yellow ones. I always say how much fun this type of building is because you can just be so much more creative when you aren't limited to hardcore mode. Would you ever be interested in watching me make maybe creative builds for videos? Well, anyways, we have those assets. Next, I'd like to make a crane. Shovel actually offered me a basic asset he already had. So I took it and then made a base for it. After that, I added this massive wheel on top, which provides support and allows the crane to rotate. After texturing a few other parts of it, I had the first crane asset completed. Dude. That claw is so rad. Finally, I wanted to make the base pillars for the rig. For these, I created some diamond, gold, and emerald walls. I then textured and added some depth plus height and extra blocks to give more detail. And here we are, that should be everything. I'm gonna call Shovel and ask what to do next. Hey Shovel, I got the assets over here. Oh, nice. So how would you say I should start shaping this? All right. Here, let's bring this base over. Then you should probably get the walls and stuff in, but use different blocks so you can change them out later. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. So Shovel and I spent the next few hours really just practicing the shape. An interesting thing he said was that builds like these need to be organized chaos. What that means is even though all these crates look random and messy, they still have to have some level of organization to them, such as similar shapes and heights of all the blocks. This is the type of thinking that I believe will take a basic build to the next level. So I can thank Shovel for that. I then pasted the crane onto an open spot, and for some reason this was what really just motivated me to continue because the project felt so much more alive seeing it there. Cool, now let's take the assets and start painting them onto the walls. So here we are guys, I spent about six hours today getting to this point. I took a little break, touched some grass, and really thought long and hard about what details I was going to add next. Platforms. You see right now, all this feels like one big build. But as we add in these platforms, the build starts to feel better separated and more like the Brent Delta rig. Even better, once the platforms were in, I added some scaffolding assets underneath them to give support. These are almost color-coded, so red goes with red, yellow with yellow, etc, etc. 
With the build coming along, Shovel and I also added a quick helicopter pad onto the empty spot of the rig to give more detail. From there I added stairs throughout the entire place to give access from level to level. And then iron bars and stone wall railways, cause we don't really want this to happen. I then pasted some forge and tower assets throughout the entire rig. These made the place look much more mechanical and industrial, which is exactly the look I was going for. Then we added this cute little helicopter on the pad, and finally, I went throughout the entire place placing diamond and gold pipes, so that way with one command they could all be changed into better blocks. And there we are, that's the entire rig completed. This actually looks so good. Here, let me select this whole region and see how many blocks it is. Let's just say I needed a day for some R&R to mentally prepare myself for building this. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Anyways, let's collect all these items. I almost forgot that this build requires four dragon eggs just for the flex. And you might be wondering how I actually have multiple dragon eggs. That's because a while back I made a dragon egg duper. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, something was in my throat there. I meant to say farm. Looks like most of these are pretty easy to collect, so I'll quickly speed through them. Gotta get some brain coral blocks from the coral reef. Now for some mud bricks, red nether bricks, light gray wool, which I believe we can just get some wool from the farm. Yes, we'll have to shear all these sheep. Okay, so those appear to be the easy items collected. Next up, we have over 2,000 brown mushroom blocks. I don't know if there's a way to farm these, but I actually have a fun manual method. So, you remember the map room? Yeah, it's extremely laggy here, but I wanna use it to find a mushroom island. That'll work, let's head over there. Let's quickly gather all these brown mushrooms up. After I got all the brown mushroom blocks, I went to the end ship and got some light gray concrete powder that I then converted into concrete. From there, I also got yellow concrete, the 8,800 deep slate bricks, 9,300 normal deep slate, and finally, I spent the rest of the afternoon AFK at the mangrove tree farm to get a ton of mangrove logs. Great, we're gonna take these and actually convert them into mangrove wood. Now, all of these gotta become the stripped log variant. And if you know anything about stripping logs, it's that you gotta place them, then you gotta use an axe to strip it, and then mine it again. For over 9,000 logs, that is gonna take a really long time. Which is why I made an automatic log stripper here designed by Eagle Eyes. And all we have to do is AFK here for about an hour. And boom, all the logs are finished. There's just one item we need to be fully done, 10,600 yellow wool. Okay, so there are two options I know of getting this. The first, we could shear some sheep, or the second, we can craft the wool using four string. Now I know at first glance, that seems crazy even thinking about that, cause I'd need over 40,000 string to make all the wool. But I think this might actually be our best option, because a couple of days ago, I joined the Outcast SMP, where Wenzo showed me this really small string farm that's crazy fast. My thought is if we can build like 10 of these, I can get all the string I'll ever need. So I'm flattening this area in the industrial district. That way we can have all the space to build the little string farms. Now the design is really simple, but for some reason I have to build it while facing south or else it won't work. Place some blocks, then we need trap doors, and just this block and lever, then shear the string and flick the lever, and boom, the farm is working. And this thing is even pretty quick. All right, so let me go ahead and make the rest of these. And done. I got nine of these things built and then also added some water streams underneath to connect everything to the storage system here. And now we just gotta test it. So to begin all of these farms, we need to go through and flick all of these levers. Then come over here and watch. Whoa, that is filling up so fast. I sat there for about a half an hour collecting thousands upon thousands of string until I definitely had enough. After that, I crafted all 
dull the white wool and then just needed to dye it yellow. Now, I have this bone meal here, and you know when you bone meal sunflower, you get yellow dye? Well, it turns out I can use my auto clicker to get it much quicker. <laughs> well, it turns out I can use an auto clicker for the auto clicker, and it clicks over 100 times per second. It's like a golden waterfall of flowers. After feasting my eyes on the sunflower waterfall, I crafted all the yellow wool, which meant I had finally collected all 150,000 blocks, meaning there was just one final thing to do. It was time to build the oil rig. First things first, I set up a platform in the middle with all the materials. After that, I placed beacons down to give myself the effects while building, and then made sure to light up every part of the build as I went so that mobs wouldn't spawn on the oil rig and the guardian farm would still work. With everything out of the way, there's now nothing stopping me from finishing. This was the climax of my journey. It had taken weeks of my time, and now finally all of my effort was about to be worth it. Yes! And there it is! Thank you so much for watching all the way through. This was definitely one of my most insane projects yet. And if you'd like to download it or my hardcore world, I have both of them available on my Patreon. A link is in the description. Now, stay tuned for next time because I have all the required items to work on the largest mega structure I have ever built.